going to present to you the problem number six, bro uh, broken pencil, uh, broken pencil. So this problem uh, talks about finding the probability of the fracture of a pencil that has been dropped from center high with uh, the length also. It asks for the probability dependence on the length of the pencil and the height of the fold. But it mainly uh, uh, talk, uh, sorry, it mainly talk about the proposal of an effective non-invasive technique to test this probability. So in order uh, to solve this problem, I want to make a little outline where I'm going to talk about uh, the experimental method, the proposal, and is we propose two methods. In the in the third place, I want you to show you. I want to show you a short theory and first approximation when we try to determine the physics of why this uh, breakage happens. So, in the first place, I'm going to start with the first method. This method is called the electrical resistance method, and as we know, the graphite is an electrical conductor. So, uh, the method uh, tricks about measuring the resistance before and after the pencil has been dropped. So, if we found any difference in the resistance measurements, what it means is that the internal structure of the graphite has been damaged. Uh, so, uh, for a baseline uh, characterization, we take up a pencil road, a pencil graphite, and we manually break them, so we can have the characterization of the, dif dif the difference on the resistance from a first breakage, a second total fracture, a third fracture, and so on and so forth. We make this characterization from different uh, pencils and we see the same behavior. So what it means is that the difference in the resistance from all pencils from the graphite roll is the same. In the experimental setup, uh, we, we drop uh, different pencils from different lengths, from different height. And this is just uh, the one for the longest one. What we found is that as we expected, the difference in the pencils show difference in the resistance that we measure before they were dropped and after we, we, they were dropped. So this shows that it is actually a change in the structure of the pencil, right? This behavior, this difference in the resistance, that that's what matters to us, uh, we see that it increased, and it increased on the height of the fold. We see that the height of the fold went just from 0.5 meter to 3.5 Mirror, actually a uh, small height. But we see that this behavior is presented in not just by the length, but also by the height, by the height, sorry. So the probability depends uh, on these two parameters, as we expected, and if the parameters of the length of the height increase, the probability of the uh, breakage increase. We corroborate this with an invasive method that was uh, to burn them. What happened? we see that the probability, well, it was a probability for a uh, lowest height, but what we found is that there was just a small superficial laminar fractures, right? It wasn't a breakage at all, and that we had no control over them. I mean, there could be one, just one fracture or two fractures in a whatever length of the pencil. So uh, we decided to propose an another method. This method is called the Joule effect. The Joule effect uh, talks about the kinetic energy that the electrons lose uh, when he found some irregularities on the pencil, some change in the impedance, and what we do it did was to make a current pass by the pencil and with a thermal camera uh, see where were the points that uh, hit it first. As we see uh, for our baseline for characterization, a no broken pencil, I mean a pencil comes just take out of the box, uh, we see that it, it starts hitting homogeneously in the same time in all the pencils. But when we did the same at the, before uh, the previous method and we break it manually, what we found is that the point where we, were, when we break the pencil start hitting first due to the, to the dual effect. So we uh, repeat the experiment. We drop again uh, some more pencil. <laughs> But uh, we saw, as we saw that from a short height, the, there was a fracture. There was just a, a short, low, I don't know how to say it, short <laughs> breakage. <laughs> so we decided to throw the pencil from a highest height, from 10 meters, 14 meters, and 18 meters. 
what we found is that uh, the behavior of the probability has, it's the same. I mean, it increased also by the length of the pencil and the height in the same way. But what happened, if you can see here, a pencil of, uh, that has been dropped from 10 meters, um, there is zero probability. But when we had uh, the one from three meters, we had also a probability. What happened, I mean, in this we had it and the other had. But what, what happened and why this happened? Because when we burn again the non-broken pencil, we see that it was heated homogeneously as we expected because uh, uh, there were no broken. But when we burn it, we see also small fractures. So this method, the limitation is that it can see the small fractures that the other one can. In the part of the broken pencil, we see that uh, the points as we expected uh, get here first, but when we burn it, we see the actually fracture, the actually uh, transverse fracture. The, the, so this is actually a broken pencil. And as a summary of the method and the probability, we have this. We propose two methods, the electrical resistance and the unit effect, and both has pros and contras, as uh, the first can measure small fractures and big fractures, uh, but the second can locate them. Right? And the second one, well, it can be, it can measure the this, this small fracture, but it is stopped with the first uh, method. So at this point, uh, we see that there is not a fixed probability because it depends on the geometrical and the fabric, um, well, the physical characteristics of the pencil. But the, the behavior, the probability is that it increases when these parameters increase. However, we wanted to uh, give a um, physical explanation of why this uh, broken is pencil, and we propose that in the fall, there is an, an standing wave that is um, uh, well generated on the pencil uh, due to the fall. So the parameters are the pencil length and the uh, condition, well, uh, the normal conditions. And uh, as we see, uh, the pencil, when it falls, falls and starts uh, vibrating with the resonant frequency of the pencil. But uh, as we, oh, <laughs> sorry, with the natural frequency of the pencil, so the only parameter that can change on the pencil is the amplitude. And that amplitude is related with the deflection um, characteristics of the pencil. So uh, equalizing, e e equalizing? Equality? Equality. Equality. <laughs> the energy of the standing wave of the pencil with the potential energy of the pole, we can relate and have the, um, we can solve for the amplitude and we can see that it is, the amplitude also depends on our relevant parameters, the, the length of the pencil and the height of the pole. We made the, the um, um, relation with the, with the values that we use experimentally and this is the behavior that we found from the Europer probability. This is for the first method, and this one is for the second method. Uh, so, uh, as important on the conclusions, what we have is that there is not a fixed value for the fracture probability, because, well, as I told you, it uh, depends on physical characteristics and mechanical characteristics that can be implemented on the pencil, but it does depend on the length of the pencil and the height of the fall. So in, in order to answer the second uh, question of the problem, the probability increase as these parameters does, and well, uh, obviously it decreases as they do, as they do so. And as a third conclusion from the part of the um, uh, proposal, we propose the two methods, the electrical resistance ones and the general effects that are actually efficient to determine the fractures, but not just the fractures, but also the, the breakage that the pencil ha has on the on the drop. So thank you so much for here. Thank you. Uh, good morning, dear audience. Uh, my name is Dubois. I'm from Kim Ukraine, and now I'm going to pose the solution of problem number six, broken pencil. Uh, and according to the statement of the problem, we thought it needed to investigate the probability of a fracture of, uh, of a pencil, and uh, depending on the height of the falling, uh, and also uh, propose a non-invasive method to define this, uh, this broken of the pencil. 
Uh, in the report, in the report, there was uh, several uh, several methods of defining the uh, the broken of the pencil. Uh, first method it was uh, investigation by the change of the resistivity of the pencil. Uh, and so indeed, reporter uh, showed us that as we change the uh, as we broke the pencil, the, the local thickness of the uh, of the pencil change, changes, and due to this, uh, the resistivity increases. Uh, he showed us uh, some uh, some experiments uh, where he tried to change the pressure and other parameters of the uh, of the of the pencil and uh, investigated the dependence of the resi resistivity uh, on different parameters. But uh, uh, there is uh, some kind of unclear experimental methodics because of we understand that uh, uh, as we try to broke a pencil, uh, depending on how strongly we try to push the, the both parts, uh, we will get. The different resistivity because of uh, if there are uh, very uh, very weak contact of uh, parts of the pencil, uh, the the resistivity will be much higher. Uh, and also uh, during the whole report, reporter uh, investigated the uh, experimentally investigated the dependence of uh, probability of broken of the pencil on a height. Uh, but there is uh, there was uh, showed any study of how we drop the pencil, uh, under which angle, with, with which velocity, uh, on which part, uh, on which side the pencil need to to fall to broke or not to broke, uh, and to. As I said, reporter uh, in this part and in his further parts investigates the dependence uh, of the probability on the height. Uh, then the second method was a method uh, <coughs> was a thermal method, uh, and the reporter showed us experimental setup uh, using which he indeed could define the the play, uh, especially the place where we have a broken of the pencil uh, by the local increase of the temperature uh, due to decrease of the thicknesses and thus increase of resistivity in this. Uh, uh, at this point, uh, at this point, uh, but also uh, uh, there is no theoretical analysis of this method. So reporter Kevin uh, couldn't predict the, I don't know, the dependence of uh, increase of the local pressure or on the on the resistivity and thus the thickness of the of the broken of the pencil at this point. Uh, then a uh, reporter also showed us the third uh, way to investigate the uh, the broken of the pencil. It's a wave analysis. A uh, reporter uh, showed us that uh, during the uh, during the falling of the pencils there appears the waves uh, using which we can define the uh, using their amplitude we can define the propagation of the events uh, inside epsil uh, in, inside pencil. He found the uh, equation for the velocity of propagation of the pencil. And also, reporter mentioned that if we change the uh, if lock, if the length of the pencil changes uh, the length also changes and so. Uh, Using this reporter could uh, investigate the uh, the ratio between two parts which which were uh, investigated, uh, but uh, there was uh, uh, the, the problem was that uh, reporter said that uh, as we change the length of the broken part of the pencil, the uh, wavelength uh, which may be placed on this part uh, changes. But there was uh, any analysis of the spectrum, like uh, if we uh, if we apply the uh, if we apply the sound to both ends of the of the pencil, uh, uh, the the wave propagates inside the pencil, and uh, if the effective length changes, uh, the spectrum also will change. But reporter haven't investigated this experimentally, and I think that uh, it will imp uh, very strongly improve uh, very strongly improve the uh, reporter's investigation by investigation of at which part we indeed observe the for for which wavelengths we indeed observe the change of the uh, of the amplitude. And so we can uh, really precisely predict the uh, the place where the uh, where the pencil, uh, pencil is broken. Uh, so we think that uh, reporter uh, investigated the dependence of probability on main parameters of the system. Uh, the investigation on the height was done on a really good level. Reporter investigated in 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 the three cases uh, dependence of probability on a height. Uh, and also, indeed, we think that these three methods, three methods are applic uh, applic um, applicable to investigate the uh, probability of uh, broken of a pencil. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I invite the reporter to the discussion. Uh, 
and uh, first thing I want to discuss with you is uh, uh, how actually we can define the, prob uh, prob uh, the level of damage because you showed us experimental photos on which we saw that uh, even for, uh, for a normal pencil there was some kind of, of uh, defections uh, which may lead to the change of resistivity or another parameters of your pencil. Like what is the pre uh, precision of your method and how it depends on different parameters of, of the system? Wow. I think. What? I just made you question. Uh, maybe, yeah. Okay, I think the. How can I. Sorry, can you ask uh, a question? Uh, what, is the what is the precision of your method and how you can you. Uh, like, uh, for a different pencil, uh, can you say uh, that indeed we, we have uh, broken of the pencil uh, at this point for, for pe pencils that we use? That yeah, we well, use? Uh, from the precision is. What? Well, uh, yes, I can tell you uh, if a pencil is dropped from. I mean, you need to give me the initial conditions of yes. the, of your of your pencil that have been dropped, so I can tell you which is the probability that has been okay. uh, that has been uh, taken. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm, like uh, the soul, like the probability, uh, if, uh, if I increase the number of uh, drops of the pencil, I will increase the probability, and so uh, I can say that yes, with this probability, the pencil will broke or, uh, uh, or not. Like uh, uh, the, pro uh, the problem is that uh, you do not have uh, enough experiments, or uh, there is another problem which cannot be taken into account in your experiments. Um, well, yes, uh, that's a point that we have to improve, uh, well, that I would like to, to improve, and is the number of the sample. Because, as you know, in the way that we can increase the number of the sample, on talking about probability, the probability tends to be stabilized. Yeah, but I think that these samples are really, actually really good, because we use almost 15 pencils from uh, each one of the, of the four, and we can have uh, an... I mean, a uh, 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 coherence behavior <laughs> taking into account the length and the height of the pencil. Yeah, okay. And also, in your experiment, how have you uh, f uh, let the pencil fail, uh, like, from which position and under which angle uh, the pencil touches uh, uh, the surface? Okay. Well, uh, from this condition, the pencil is drop horizontally. Yeah? Uh -huh. We always drop it horizontally, but as you know, yeah. we, can, we can control from this height how the pencil is going to behave due yeah. to the drop force on the air. So we have no control okay. on how uh, the, co the, the pencil uh, falls, but we so can control the surface when the, the, I mean, we can equalize the conditions where all the pencil is going to be uh, dropped. So all the pencil has mm. into the same, uh, uh, so into the you same you for, for one experiment, you have uh, 15, uh, 15 folds of 15 pencils uh, from, such a, from such a high height, yes? Yeah. Uh, I think, yes, indeed, that uh, it's a uh, lack of experiments, and I, see, I believe that it will improve your uh, solution if you make uh, more experiments. And now let's move on to another question. Yeah, you're right uh, about that. You're talking about probability, uh, the way you increase the sample, yeah. it's better. Uh, it's, uh, it's a question about the contact of, uh, of different parts uh, of, uh, of a pencil. Uh, as I understand, uh, in your experiment, so when you try to divide the whole pencil on the parts, uh, like you just cut it, the parts, yes? No, that's just, uh, I mean, uh, <coughs> well, you're talking about this? Uh, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this, this has nothing to do with the probability, it's just a baseline for characterization to see how so you yeah, okay, the, the, the resistance, the changes in the resistance behavior. Like you just try to cut, uh, cut uh, the whole pencil, uh, and you just put the, uh, just measure the, the electrodes. System. Yeah. Uh, as I understand, you uh, how have you controlled the uh, the pressure force between them, and how uh, have you investigated the change of resistivity with the change of pushing force and uh, type of contacts, for example, between the parts of pencil? Wow. We used this, uh, that was just for, for line-based characterization. We use, I don't know if you can hear this setup, where we have two claws. Uh, well, two claws, yeah. and that's the standard points of the pencil, right? So all the pressure is going to be uh, the same in all of the points, because the, co the claws are uh, the same. all your experiments, you control so the contacts uh, very, very precisely. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I think we don't know if you have time.
Okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, the report uh, for the pre presentation, for the opponent for his own presentation and for the discussion we, you had a uh, few minutes ago. So uh, I will uh, do the review for this uh, problem uh, 14 and uh, I will just state briefly uh, Yes, the main statement of this problem. We have to study the probability of the fracture, the height, uh, as a, with respect to the height and the length of the pencil, uh, and found, uh, found, not found, but propose an effective non-invasive technique to test that. Uh, so this is the expected topics I just mentioned. Now about the report. Uh, reporter presented two non-invasive methods, the resistance one and the thermal one, and uh, he studied uh, the probability of uh, the fracture of, of the pencils with respect to this, uh, these both methods. And he just mentioned the, the positive and negative facts of each method. Uh, then he, he proposed a uh, sort of explanation for uh, the, break uh, the, the, uh, the breakage when the, the, uh, when the pencil uh, fall and uh, tried to explain his probabilities using that model. Uh, so that's it. Uh, for the opposition, the opposition mentioned that the resistance with the fracture number uh, is a relevant parameter, an important parameter. Uh, they uh, mentioned that the uh, experimental results were good with the dual effect, but they uh, point out the fact that uh, no study on the pencil uh, or the drop of the pencil were done and uh, some parameters were not well controlled in the experiments, uh, but they didn't Analysis, analyzes the frequency of the oscillations uh, of the waves inside the pencil that they, uh, which is the model that we proposed. Uh, during the discussion we have uh, heard about the characterization and, defin uh, and definition of damages uh, done to a pencil. It was a brief but uh, of, uh, important part of the discussion. Uh, they discussed also the number of experiments and that we need to increase that number. Uh, and uh, the contact, they discussed, uh, the last thing that they discussed is the contact pressure force on the pencil lead as a parameter also. Uh, so the discussion strength was raises good uh, questions and lacks uh, and the opponent tries to find the impact angle. So uh, I will skip the, 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 the weaknesses of this. Well, yes. Okay. Did not fully reply the, uh, the level of damage questions. It was a weakness of the discussion. But we have a bunch of questions raising from this uh, discussion and to the reporter and to the opponent. So I would like, I will not go maybe through all the questions, but I would like to structure the discussion in the following way. We need to choose now, uh, yeah, this is discussion, sorry. Uh, we need to choose now uh, the, 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 the most relevant method, you can plug if you want. Uh, we need to choose the most relevant method, non-invasive method, in order to find cracks in the, the pencil. So I would like to agree with you what's the best method for that between the two methods they proposed and try to improve that method with the, the, the imprecision you, you mentioned and with, uh, yes, the, the method you used. So what's the best method you, you think for the, the fraction, uh, fracture uh, investigation? Uh, I think that uh, it's investigation of temperatures uh, inside the pencil uh, because of, uh, as I understand, we, we could clearly from the photos uh, uh, look at the point where, the, where we have a fraction of the, of the pencil. So we can define actually the point. Uh, okay. So do you agree with uh, his comments on that? Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> I will say no. I will say for me, the best one is the electric. The electrical method. Yeah. Okay, and well, why do you think that? Because the electrical one, as I show you, uh, it allows me to not just see the big breakage, but also the small fractures on the pencils. So I will know if just it isn't just totally break, but also it has the small ones. Uh, yes, but uh, due to uh, high inaccuracy in your method, you cannot uh, uh, strongly define the fractures because of, uh, even in your uh, plots, we can see the high divergent divergence for the resistance of different of the same pencils, uh, or the previous one. Yeah. Uh, about, okay. about, so, about the efficiency, so. about the efficiency uh, there's. I mean, we did that with our multimeter, but we enter into the range so, of the. Okay. Okay. We need to agree on one method. Okay. 
We will choose. What What do you prefer? What one method? Uh, the electrical one. Electrical one. Okay. Yeah, for example, yeah. Uh, for example, okay. Uh, what's the most uh, important parameter to take into account in that method? And what's the biggest lack in your in your method you presented for the electrical one? What's the the biggest uh, imperfection you in the method you used for the electrical method? I think the mainly relevant parameter to take into account in the electrical one and also in the thermal is the contact points. Contact, contact points of the Okay, contact. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, so you agree. So we need to improve that uh, that point. How do you do that? Well, uh, I don't know, creating a setup that uh, makes a steady, I don't know, a uh, uh, no move. Uh, I think that's uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, not a uh, biggest problem because of, uh, for example, it's a uh, it's a pencil, yeah. uh, and we uh, place a, uh, here we place a, uh, the wire, uh, and wire contacts the pencil uh, like uh, only yeah, we one, didn't one use, point. We didn't use a wire. Uh, what yes, we, what in we the case was a, a pole. Uh, sorry. Yes, but like so, uh, they are also contact the pencil in one point. Uh, yes, they also contact pencil in one point, but I think that it would be much better if we uh, if we investigate the contact uh, with a, in a small surface of the yeah, okay. If you use this one, you're going to have a lot of a lack of on parameters like the pressure, as you mentioned, or yeah. the position of the wire. Yes, in your case, it is also observed. So uh, yeah, but uh, okay. So uh, I think to move on and uh, go more on the physics now. Yeah, okay. Because uh, okay, the method could be improved. We didn't uh, see what's the biggest improvement, but we need to go on the, the physics. So you showed the probability measurements, and we need to construct a probability model in order to uh, to to fit as much as we can to to, to the measurements you did. So I think I will I will ask the opponent what kind of method of, of uh, parameters would will uh, enter in the probability probabilistic model. Uh, for example, I think it's a uh, parameters of tensor itself, like uh, how uh, how hard we can uh, divide it. So there is uh, the resistance of pencil without any uh, without any changes because of if, if, the, uh, if the resistance is very low, uh, we, could, uh, we cannot observe the high change of the resistance during the experiment. Uh, also, okay, uh, resistance without, resistance with uh, breakage. Yeah. What other parameters do you think I, is relevant? Well, yeah, I'm not I'm really good. But I think that find um, a probability, how do you mean? A probability, probabilistic model. A probabilistic model is hard to do. Why? Because it is a random event, but it's not just a probability of one or two or two position because it, what it depends is the physical characteristic and the mechanical characteristic. I okay. Mean, I can have one bracket, two bracket. Okay. I have no other we way. have another proposition from the opponent team. Okay. Uh, in this plot, uh, did your result uh, was exactly 10 persons, 20 persons, 30 persons, exactly. And no, no, they, 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 they said that we have uh, done the measurements on, on, on 50. On they said that we have done the measurements on 50. Yeah, it's the amount of measurements that have been broken over the And we just, we just don't see the error bars. It's a, it's a lag, okay, but okay, we don't see the error bars, it's okay. What about the probabilistic model? We, we were speaking about the probabilistic model. So you said that the, um, so the breaking was directly to the energy. In our in our theoretical proposal. Exactly. So can, can you try to link the energy that has this impact with this probability? So when, yeah, and that's what we try to do in the first approximation that we propose. Okay, so we have a method to build a probabilistic model using energies. What kind of energy do you think will be will enter in this probabilistic model? Uh, kinetic energy, like kinetic energy be, be before the heat. Uh, and uh, kinetic energy of translation, translational and rotational motion. Uh, and also, I think that uh, influence of surface uh, is very, uh, very reliable in this problem. For example, the restitution coefficient. Don't go so fast. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, restitution coefficient. C part heat. Uh, energy of surface, you said. Uh, not energy uh, of surface, uh, restitution coefficient. Restitution coefficient. Yeah. Uh, it's not an energy. 
it's a yeah, it's not an energy, it's but a parameter which defines the uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay. So now we have some uh, okay, uh, coefficient uh, institution of coefficient. Yeah, okay. uh, now we have some terms. How can we just yes arrange them in order to build it? Do you have no. a position of yeah, no, no. I mean, Even a simple model. We need to, to have a model in order to say, okay, if I have uh, a height, so we will have, of course, the height or the fall. If I have a height and I have a pencil, and if I let it fall, what's the probability of, of this pencil to be broken? You can, well, in our proposal, you can find that, you can find a regime where it's going to be, I don't know, you can see that. You, it can be determined on the initial probabilities that are these ones. These energies can be added actually and can improve the, the, the proposal that we have because, as I show you, uh, they are, um, this is a, a rough, a rough uh, uh, approximation to the theoretical, but I think this is the way that we can Sorry. take it. One, we'll, one question here, one question here, and then this is the last one. Okay, uh, if I, for example, give you some random pencil uh, and try to use your resistance method, uh, as I understand, it's not really applicable for some unknown pencil, and uh, I assume that the thermal method will work better to understand the fractures inside the pencil. Uh, what's your If you have a pencil... Uh, I, for example, I give you some pencil. Yeah. And you, uh, how, uh, what is the method best uh, allows you to understand the fractures inside the pencil? Wow. For some random pencil. For some random event, the electrical one. Because for some random event, let's say in your daily day, the pencil is going to fall. The pencil is going to fall from this height. So is the, the problem you don't to know information about the height. You don't okay. Know the last, last, yeah, there's a pencil. There. Last, fast question. Sorry. Uh, the, the Separation. Okay, uh, if I, for example, give you some random pencil uh, and try to use your resistance method, uh, as I understand, it's not really applicable for some unknown pencil, and uh, I assume that the thermal method will work better to understand the fractures inside the pencil. Uh, what's your If you have a pencil, uh, I, for example, I give you some pencil. Yeah. And, uh, how, uh, what is the method best uh, allows you to understand the fractures inside the pencil? Wow. For, some for some random event, the electrical one. Because for some random event, let's say in your daily day, the pencil is going to fall. The pencil is going to fall from this height. So is it, it, they probably you don't know information about the height. You don't okay. Know just last, last, yeah, there's a there. last, fast question. Sorry. Uh, the, the, the Separation. Like this, or advance like this versus landing like this versus like this. How does the probability of fracture change? Those are rough uh, questions. Any of these answers? I mean, uh, well, I think all that uh, four comes into the probability that we found that we couldn't control uh, the way of, of the, uh, the pencil land on the earth. We saw some pencils that drop horizontally, but also in that way. So I think uh, these results conclude also it's difficult to like separate which are the probability to a specific uh, uh, way of, 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 to a specific way of landing. For example, I, uh, I think that uh, with the change of the angle, for example, if, we, if it falls uh, just flat, the uh, probability will be lower uh, if it falls uh, like this because it bends at the moment of uh, contact. Uh, and I think that you could have needed to investigate different cases and uh, find some, uh, some mean value of the probability for different uh, geometries of the point, something like this. In my opinion, it will be. I agree with the opponent, and uh, I think the method of uh, the waves inside the pencil is a good uh, approach. But I think there will be two different waves because this five four will be translational waves, and this one will be. Uh, different. Thank you.
Yeah, that's a question that I mentioned before, kind of, and I really like to ask that. Actually, no, uh, the form of the pencil doesn't affect the breakage, because uh, one may think that, but uh, we also burned the one that we didn't have any change in the resistance. And we, what we found is that in all of the pencils that didn't present that change, the graphite were, were intact. Yeah, so all the resin that is between the wood and the wood, uh, all I mean, it doesn't affect the, the parts of the brain. Thank you. 